So, Tom, we're in the middle of a bit of chaos here at the, outside the hall of the, at the Maine Charitable Mechanic Association. What's going on up here? Well, we are building four bathrooms uh, to service our ballroom and the third floor of this facility, which is being done by uh, several of the unions in, uh, in Maine. And what kind of improvements are they making? They are, uh, they removed one old bathroom that had a step to it, and they are installing four new bathrooms, one of which is ADA, you know, the uh, uh, compliant, um, so we can handle handicapped, uh, you know, patrons. And why were these improvements needed? Well, we had one bathroom uh, on this floor for uh, our ballroom, which has 160 uh, occupants, and it just created some um, challenges for the users. And now we'll have new bathrooms and, you know, with, you know, modern fixtures, and um, it'll be a great improvement to uh, the amenities uh, for the ballroom. And the work is being on, done under a special arrangement with some of the unions. Describe that a little bit. Well, we uh, initially uh, talked with um, the electrical unions, Don Barry and uh, Alan Shepard, and they came in and installed some additional receptacles in the ballroom. We had uh, basically three receptacles for a 3,000 square foot uh, ballroom and they added about uh, 12 uh, more. And during my discussions with Alan and the electrical union, they have talked about uh, uh, rewiring the mezzanine, which would be the fourth floor and the fifth floor, uh, which is you know woefully inadequate in terms of outlets and receptacles. In the course of that discussion, we, I told him about our need for bathrooms, and he said, well, you ought to talk to John Napolitano. He's the president of the Maine State Building and Construction Trades Council, uh, which I did, and I told him about our need, and he said, you know, they've been looking for a project where they can work together, and this is a perfect project, and the mechanics are uh, very similar in, uh, in direction to the, you know, the unions. And so they jumped on the opportunity, and this is what we have. Well, the demolition, we had to come in and demo the walls here, so the, uh, the laborers came in, the carpenters came in and, and uh, did some demo, along with the laborers came in and did, uh, moved a lot of equipment and did some demolition. Then we had the electricians have been moving all along. They had to move the wires out and we run new, uh, re run new wires and a new service here, as well as the plumbing as well. We had to take out the, uh, we moved the old bathroom, run some more uh, drain lines, vent lines, and domestic hot water and, uh, and water lines and putting the new fixtures in. So we're getting there. We're not there yet, but we're get, we should be there within another week. And you're using a lot of apprentices for this work, is that right? Well, we have apprentices that are coming in and working with our program here, working with our contractors, our signatory contractors. Uh, the apprenticeship program for the, uh, the electricians have been down here working with their coordinator, Alan Shepard. The carpenters have come down. They both, they've had both journeymen and apprentices down here as well as, long as, as, well as the pipe fitters, and the plumbers and the pipe fitters, and the laborers as well. What is the benefit to the apprentices for doing a, a work like this? Well, it's good experience for them, and it's uh, on-the-job experience in, in the community experience. The Maine Charitable Mechanic Association started out to help apprentices, so 200 years later, it's sort of come full circle here. It, you're exactly right. Uh, it, it's great. It's an opportunity for the apprentices to work in a building that is uh, 170 years old, and uh, which presents its own challenges. Uh, most of the uh, uh, the trades today work on newer newer buildings, and this is an historic building in this you know National Historic Register. And having this opportunity is a great learning experience uh, for those apprentices. Would you have been able to do all this work without the contribution from the unions? Well, we would, have, we would eventually have, have done the work. Uh, we just wouldn't have been, done it, been able to do it in such a timely fashion. You know, the value of the work being done here is probably fifty or $60,000. Uh, and, you know, we're, a, you know, we're a, a venerable old organization. We're 200 years old, but we certainly aren't cash uh, flush uh, to be able to afford something like that without a major fundraising campaign. So it came at a great uh, time for us, and they were looking for opportunities to put their apprentices uh, to work.